Hey there, this is MathCamp321 bringing you a lesson on solving quadratic inequalities in six examples. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to cheat, but not in the traditional sense. Cheat is an acronym, and if we take the two letters from the words quadratic inequality, we get Q and I, which if you're a Scrabble player is now a permissible word, and we pronounce that chi. And to solve a quadratic inequality, we're going to use something called interval testing whose initials are IT. So if we're going to solve a quadratic inequality, we're going to use something called interval testing, chi, it, cheat. So for this type of problem, I'm going to allow you to cheat. Let's take a look at the procedure. Step A, set the inequality to zero, which means move everything to one side so that zero is alone on the other side. Part B, find x by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. Part C, Place solutions for x on a number line and interval test. So the directions for the three examples, the first three examples, are to find the interval over which each inequality is true. Okay, so moving through the steps. Part A, set inequality to zero, which means move everything to one side. Well, I guess before I even start, I should just make sure that you know what does it mean to have a quadratic inequality. Well, the first thing that I need to highlight is what makes something a quadratic. And that is, if your variable is squared, that means it's quadratic. So if we look at example one, you'll see that we have x squared. Then the question is, what makes something an inequality? And that would be if it doesn't have an equal sign, if it has a greater than or less than symbol. So this is an example of a quadratic inequality because of the power of two and because of the greater than symbol. Okay, going back to the procedure, part A set the inequality to zero. So I'm going to start by moving the nine to the other side, making it say x squared minus nine is greater than zero. Okay, part B says to find x by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. Well, factoring is always the quickest bet if it works. And in this case, it does work. I could factor using the difference of two squares method or the dots method. So x squared minus nine factors into x plus three x minus 3. Okay, the next part of the process to, is to set each factor equal to 0 to get what the solutions to this are. So I'm going to take x plus 3 and set it equal to 0, getting me x equals 3, or I'm sorry, x equals negative 3. And over here, if I take x minus 3 and set it equal to 0, I get x equals 3. Notice when I wrote this, I did not use the inequality. That's going to come back later. Part C says to place these answers on a number line and do something called interval testing. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a number line. And you may have noticed that the two boundaries that I placed on the number line were the solutions when I set the factors equal to zero. The next decision I have to make is whether to use open or closed circles for these solution points. And I'm going to use open circles because there is no equal sign in the originally stated inequality. Now, in my mind, this number line has been divided into three regions. The region to the left, the region in the middle, and the region to the right. And what I'm supposed to do is test values from each of these regions to see whether the inequality is true or not. So what I like to do in my class is show what testing value I'm using. So I'm going to test over the left negative 5. And I can pick any number that I want that's less than negative 3. But I'm going to choose negative 5. In the middle, I'm going to test 0, and to the right, I'm going to test positive 5. Now, when I do the test, I can plug it into either the originally stated problem, or I can plug it into this, because these two things are equivalent, so it doesn't matter which one I use, they both are equal. I could actually even use this one too, so I have three choices here. Plug it into either of the three. Okay, so let's start with the negative 5, and I'm going to use the top inequality. If I plug negative 5 in for x, I get negative 5 squared is greater than 9. Well, negative 5 squared is 25, and 25 is greater than 9. So that means this is a winning region, so I'm going to shade accordingly. Now, when I plug in 0, and I'm, again, I'm going to use the top inequality, 0 squared is greater than 9. Well, 0 squared is 0, and 0 is not greater than 9. So the middle region is not a winning region, so I'm not going to shade. If I take the test value 5 and plug it in, I get 5 squared is greater than 9, and 5 squared is 25, which is greater than 9. So this is also a winning region, so I'm going to shade that accordingly. 
So my final answer using interval notation would be negative infinity to negative 3 union 3 to infinity. Okay, let's go to example 2. In example 2, we have again a quadratic inequality. It's quadratic because we have x squared and there's no equal sign. There's a greater than or equal to sign, which makes it an inequality. So step one would be to move everything to one side so that zero is alone. So I'm going to say 5x minus x squared is greater than or equal to zero. Now, part B says to solve for x in some way, either factor or use the quadratic formula. I'm going to factor using the GCF method, and I'm going to take out an x. If I do that, I'm left with x times 5 minus x. Now I'm going to take each of these factors and set them equal to zero for my solutions. The first factor is x. If I set it equal to 0, I just get x equals 0. The second factor is 5 minus x. If I set that equal to 0, I get 5 equals x or x equals 5. These values are now going to be placed on a number line. The next thing that I'm going to do is decide whether to make these boundary points open or closed circles. Because there is an equal sign, they're going to be closed circles. Now again, I have three regions, the left region, the middle region, and the right region. And I'm going to pick test values in each of these regions. Over to the left, I'm going to pick negative 2. In the middle, I'm going to pick positive 2. And over to the right, I'll pick 10. I'm going to test each of these test values into my inequality. And I can use the first three options. I could use the top one, which is the originally stated inequality. I could use this second manipulation or the third one, any one that I want that I feel is easiest to work with. So let's start with testing negative 2. And I'm going to test negative 2 into the number 1, the option number 1. So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And that's supposed to be greater than or equal to negative 2 squared, which is 4. Well, is negative 10 greater than or equal to 4? The answer is no, so I'm not going to shade. So now let's move to the middle test point. The middle test point is 2. If I plug in 2, I get 10 greater than or equal to, and then we have 2 squared, which is 4. Well, is 10 greater than or equal to 4? The answer is yes, so I will shade there. Let's move to our final testing point, which is 10. 5 times 10 is 50, greater than or equal to 10 squared, which is 100. Is 50 greater than or equal to 100? The answer is no. So the final answer for this one is going to be everything between 0 and 5 inclusive. Okay, let's go to the third example. x squared plus 2x is less than or equal to 8. Here we have a quadratic inequality, so I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use interval testing, and I'm going to follow the procedure at the top of the slide. So step A would be to set everything to 0. That means move everything to one side. And I'm going to say x squared plus 2x minus 8 is less than or equal to 0. Okay, part B has us solving for x by either factoring or using the quadratic formula. When I look at this, I notice that I can factor it, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that and rewrite this as x plus 4 times x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. I'm now going to take each factor and set it to 0 in order to get the boundaries. So if I take x plus 4 and set it equal to 0, I get x equals negative 4. If I take the factor x minus 2 and set it equal to 0, I get x equals 2. Now these values are going to become boundaries for your number line. I now need to decide whether to make the boundaries open or closed circles. Because there's an equal sign, which type of circle do you think I'm going to need? If you guessed closed circle, then you're correct. Once again, there are three regions. The region to the left, the region in the middle, and the region to the right and I'm going to pick test values of my choosing for each of these regions. To the, for, the, for the region to the left, I'm going to choose negative 5. For the region in the middle, I'm going to choose 0. And for the region to the right, I'm going to pick positive 5. Now I'm going to test these regions into any of the available inequalities that are all equivalent. So I could use number 1, number 2, or number 3. I think for this one, I'm going to use number 3, and I'm going to show you a slightly different technique in doing this. I don't really care what the numerical answer is for our test. I just need to know whether the test is true or false. Let me show you what I mean by that by taking these test values and plugging into inequality number 3. If I plug in negative 5, negative 5 plus 4 is a negative number. I don't care what that negative number is. I'm just going to write down that it's negative. If I plug in negative 5 into the other factor, 
I get negative 5 minus 2, which is negative 7. The product of two negatives is a positive. So the question really becomes, is a positive number less than or equal to 0? The answer is no. So now let's move to the middle region. If I take the middle test value 0, and this time I'm going to plug it into inequality number 1, we have 0 squared plus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 8. Ultimately, this becomes 0 is less than or equal to 8. And that is true, so I will shade the middle region. Okay, let's go to the final region, and I'm going to use inequality number 3. 5 plus 4 is 9, and that number, that value, is positive. 5 minus 2 is positive 3. The product of a positive value and a positive value is another positive value. So the question really becomes, where are positive values less than or equal to 0? And the answer is nowhere. So the winning inequality here is going to be all the values between negative 4 and 2 inclusive.